Hi, my name is Tim Gosling and I'm primarily a furniture designer but I'm also lucky enough to do interiors all around the world. Um, and today I'm talking about a cabinet that was quite an exciting project because we put this together with a lot of different help from a lot of different craftsmen. And one of the most exciting parts of this is working out the detail um, with a company called DKT. Um, so we have Sean and we have Steve. And I've been lucky enough to work with them for possibly, I think it's horrendously 20 years, probably something 20, like that, yes, um, mm -hmm. and lots and lots of different projects. But it's, for me, it's always about pushing the boundaries of what we can do with craftsmanship into different directions, because all those nuances are really critical. Um, you've been established for how long now? 40 years. Is it really 40 it's years? It's really 40 years. 41. We do a lot of the different things we've got. It's 40 years, 41 years and about 40 people, all with different backgrounds and skills. So what's working really well is every time Tim comes along, he wants something different, of course. Of course. And so we're working in glass, or we're doing engraving or gilding or lacquer work or carving, so many different things. Every single time that we do a piece of furniture, um, it's really exciting because we, we start off with the a, a traditional technique. The client wanted to investigate the idea, first of all, of using um, Pegasus, which was part of his um, company um, thought process. The really interesting thing about this piece is it's really two cabinets because you start off with a very austere um, Sonian outside, um, which has just pure uh, rosewood on the outside. And then as you open the inside, you get this incredible, almost what I would call a kind of Paul Smith slash of color, and you are suddenly into a totally different world. The first thing was using this technique called scraffito. What you're doing there is you're building up the red face first the mm. layers, so you get the depth, and then you're gilding. And then into the gilded outlines, then you're using the scraffito, but you're scratching out basically the gold leaf to reveal the red underneath and you're cross-hatching just like if you were doing engraving yeah. dry point. So the more you scratch, the more shading you're getting basically. And obviously it's a painstaking process and has to be done by someone who's very, very patient. There's a whole backstory here of actually not just the technique, but actually how you create that technique. And then it's my job to also take that technique, push it into a, a direction but also to work out that nuances of what that design is going to look like. Colour is critical. We had to find a, a, a red which had the right, right kind of weight with the wood. So that's working with a brighter red background and then toning over the top. So there's a variation in the colour. There's a really soft patination going on in the background. So how many layers of um, lacquer work are on this? Before we start the gilding? Yeah. See, that's what I find like, extraordinary about the idea of actual kind of lacquer work or even French polishes yeah. or even paintings. Yeah. That when you've got all those different glazes on, the light can bounce through them yeah. and actually give you a luminosity. And the gold is a 24, 23, that's a 23. So that is a loose, so on that, a loose leaf, right on the edge of the loose leaf. And it just crumbles to nothing. It's quite incredible when, how they beat fold out so finely and then they, it just disappears. And if you compare that say the Dutch metal, which is basically a brass, then you actually have something in your hands. But at the end of the day, it's quite a metal. Difficult to have different yeah. 22 is a kind of standard. Which is why you're using, presumably under a lot of the gild and you're using different colour bolts, um, and, uh, 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 red or yellow or just to kind of if you, you do water gild, if you're using water gild, it's to give you a kind of just a, a colour through gold. French, yes, because it, 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 it is transparent. Yeah, it's almost yeah, transparent, yeah. yeah. You do, it does make a difference if you don't distress. I think that that's just so beautiful to capture that snapshot yeah. of that time and for that in location. a technique that's kind of, you know, thousands of years old. Yes. I mean, so, that's one of the nice things about what we, we often do, we often do with you, is it's very location specific and yeah. it's got a particular story. And it's but it's also a museum story. piece, it's the sheer quantity of craftsmanship and remarkable level of expertise that goes into actually making them really stands alone. I mean, yeah. you just look at that in about two or three hundred years time, it will look absolutely 